want to speak very briefly to this issue. It is a crying shame, in my view, that the numbers of British ratings in the maritime industry is falling rapidly. And the former minister is right. Uh, all governments of all political persuasions have failed to address the issue of falling numbers of ratings. They've addressed the issue in relation to officers to an extent, but not anything like sufficiently in relation to ratings. So I do think this bill could be dramatically improved if the government to agree to include energy installations. That area is growing exponentially. This is a golden opportunity to recruit, train and encourage people, kids in schools in my constituency who live in the shadows of the docks, looking over at those vessels, going out to sea, wondering whether they could possibly dream of having a job in that industry. I think there's an opportunity in this bill, and I commend the government actually, because they brought forward this legislation at the time, the former Transport Secretary and the former Minister indeed uh, must have worked incredibly hard to put together uh, some complex legislation. This area is particularly complex in my view. Um, but we could go further. We could do better. And I call on the government to think very carefully about including uh, the uh, energy installations. The Honourable gentleman for giving way. And I think the point that is crucially about safety is that Dover to Calais run is an incredibly fast turnaround. Turn around. The work is incredibly intensive. It's not just that these people, uh, these exploited seafarers are working 17 weeks on, 12, 13 hours a day, seven days a week. They're going to and fro it. The most dangerous part of that run is pulling into the harbour and coming back out of the harbour. The work is intensive and actually incredibly dangerous. I'm really grateful to the minister for giving way, but he must accept that when we consider the shocking, utterly disgraceful behaviour of P&O Ferries, you know, a hope that companies like P&O Ferries, and indeed, I have to say, Irish Ferries, who are equally as bad in my respectful submission, are not going to do anything if it's just a hope. We need to put things into statute to force these bad employers to behave in a way which is acceptable. That's the truth of it. Unlimited fines. Hoping isn't enough. An unlimited fines is necessary as well. As the Honourable Member will know, we are indeed legislating, but there is, the, the seafarers charter is something uh, that we're looking at. And I think the government is not opposed to looking again at this if the voluntary charter is not successful. Either. It's a voluntary. Um, but it's, it's steps in the right direction. There are good employers out there. This, you know, I don't want to see a waste of the bottom. I want to see uh, standards uh, uh, rising. And we think the voluntary charter will, uh, will be a step in that direction. We've seen that we, you know, we have had to legislate here in order uh, to, to deliver another element of what we're looking to do. Um, Go on. <laughs> Look, the reality is this, I think. You know, fining a company like P&O Ferries two and a half thousand quid is a bit like the analogy of um, putting a parking ticket, slapping a parking ticket on the windscreen of a Bentley for parking in a disabled bay. They're just laughing. They're just laughing at it. The reality is the fines need to be punitive. They need to be threatening and they need to make the company realise that if they behave in this intolerable, disgraceful manner, they're going to be savagely fined and brought to justice. That's the only way we're going to get the results that the government, and I, I agree, 
the government are intending to do the right thing here. But we need to have that punitive tool to make it happen. I've not intended to speak, Miss Harris, but I'm afraid I've been motivated by the Honourable Member for Dover to um, say a few words. I I'm confused. I'm not trying to be awkward. I'm not trying to put the Honourable member, uh, member under any particular pressure, but I'm truly confused how she can suggest that this particular amendment to the bill doesn't fit, I think she said, with minimum wage legislation. Frankly, it's just a nonsense, and I'm afraid the Honourable Member will have to answer to her constituents who go on those ferries day in, day out. Passengers, not crew. The tragedy is the crew are exploited foreign workers as a result of what p and ferries did. But what I will in a second, but when it comes to those passengers who are probably worried, like I would be if I was travelling on one of those ferries, about seafarer fatigue, about the fact that people are doing 17 weeks off with very little rest breaks, seven days a week, 12 and 13 hours a day, with the possibility of being charged for um, accommodation and grub. That is the problem that people will foresee. So I think the Honourable Member should respectfully think carefully about not supporting. It's no good saying I respect the sentiment. She ought to agree with the amendment and vote with the opposition. Give way. That's the end of it. <laughs> Thank you for giving way, and if I may have a little bit of latitude uh, in responding. Um, I, I, look, the, the situation has been, and it's been disappointing to hear, that members opposite are determined to get their headlines, to try and make a point of difference, to try and say we are not on this side of the House working for the people, working for the seafarers, and we are the people leading this legislation. What I have been really clear about is this amendment doesn't, it doesn't actually go so far as to work for safety. The rosters you're asking for a report. It's not a serious attempt to deal with that. What we know is a serious attempt is the rosters that have to be dealt with outside of this legislation, and the Minister has set out issues in relation to it. We need to get back on to the clauses. Thank you very much. Carl Turner to finish off. Ms Harris, thank you for that. But I've got to answer the Honourable Lady. Look, the reality is, post this terrible incident where p and Ferry ferries sat 786 men and women British seafarers with the deliberate intent of replacing them with exploited mm -hmm. people who are on two and three quid an hour. The reality that came next was the fact that the MCA tied vessels up, arrested those p and ferries because they were considered not to be safe. The idea that the, the, the directors who make those decisions, I'm sticking with the relevance of the clause, Miss Harris, but the idea, the very idea that those directors shouldn't be held responsible in law for those of us in here who are lawyers, I think there are one or two, I think there's two lawyers at least, barristers on the other side, and um, although it's been a long time that I was in practice, I'm certainly qualified as a lawyer. The idea that there's going to be no personal li liability is just, I'm sorry if the Minister is incredibly bored by, I think, yawning Minister, so forgive me if I'm uh, keeping you awake. This is an important point. The idea that personal liability shouldn't apply is frankly pathetic, and I'm not making a political point. I'm not trying to make... I'm not trying to make a political point. This is not appropriate behaviour from either. Carl, to, fin Carl to, to finish up. I'm not making a political point as I was accused of making. I've got to answer it, really? Miss Harris. I can't be accused of making a political point when, in fact, I'm not doing that. The reality is this would provide some deterrence. And as the bill cur is currently, there is no yes. real deterrent. I want to work with the government. I keep work. Uh, I'm, very grateful, I'm very grateful to the Honourable Member for, for giving way. Does, does he not share my astonishment that some of the comments from the Honourable Member and the Honourable Member for South Holland and the Deepings who 
couldn't support new clauses and amendments because they didn't go far enough when obviously that iron should be directed to the minister. And yet here we have a new clause that confers personal liability and they can't back that either. I agree with the Honourable Chairman. I think this is the clause, actually, which would provide an actual deterrent to prevent other bad employers copying what happened with P&L ferries. But I can see that I'm testing the patience of 